One thing that's been perpetuated recently by the media and a lot of the real estate experts and economists is that the whole reason that most home sellers are not listing their homes for sale is because they are stuck in what's called the golden handcuffs. And in case you haven't heard this term before, what the golden handcuffs are is it's home sellers that would like to sell but they can't because they have a 3% interest rate on their mortgage, which is the lion's share of homeowners out there right now. I believe it's 80% of homeowners currently have a 5% or less interest rate on their mortgage. So if they were to turn around and list that house for sale and move to another house and have to finance the next house, they would be paying far more for the next house now that the average interest rate for a 30 year mortgage is hovering around 8%. And that's for the most well qualified borrowers. But it turns out that Fannie Mae actually looked into this and did some research and they found out that there's more to it than just the fact that people have 3% mortgages. There's more reasons why people are not listing their homes for sale right now. So Fannie Mae did the research and they actually looked at people that have a mortgage and don't have a mortgage. So you get both type of homeowners in this research data. Here's one of the major takeaways from their study. And that is that 45% of homeowners with a mortgage and 49% of homeowners who own their homes free and clear do not plan to stay in their homes longer than they originally intended. And it also says that 29% of homeowners with and without a mortgage plan to stay in their home for longer than they originally intended. So first of all, what this means is half of all homeowners out there are not going to let the current market determine whether or not they sell their home according to their research that probably now is just not the time for them they're not ready to sell yet but the 29 percent who are hanging on to their house longer than they originally intended there are other motivations at play besides the high interest rates 19 percent of those people said that they liked their home and the location 13% said that home prices were too high to buy elsewhere. An additional 13% said that their job and family is located in the area, so they plan to stay there. Also, they looked at the fact that we have a lot of older adults who are well past retirement age, and they're choosing to age in place in their home rather than move into a facility or move in with uh, other family members, which also puts a further constraint on supply. And to put that in the context, that has a major impact on the amount of listings because about one third of all homeowners are baby boomers and 80% of those baby boomers say that they would like to age in place. So the odds of people in that age group that already own a home of selling their home anytime soon is kind of slim to none. You're not going to see too many listings come up from those people unless number one, they die or they have a change of heart some kind of major life shift happens where they just change their mind and decide to sell but the vast majority of them are likely not going to do that so the interesting thing is a lot of people are not overstaying how long that they want to stay in the house in general and so what this suggests that even if interest rates were to drop to you know three percent tomorrow which isn't going to happen but if it would it suggests that there wouldn't be a surge of listings hitting the market now I kind of disagree, you know, because what about the other half of people, you know? Only 49% of the homeowners say that they are not staying longer than they intend to. But what about the other half of people? I've even heard from many of you guys in the comments section over the last several months that a lot of you wish you could sell and move somewhere else, but there's a lot of problems with that. Number one, being that you probably can't afford to buy another house if you do that. And number two, you wouldn't even be able to afford to buy the house again that you live in now at today's prices and rates. And I also have a hard time believing that everybody who bought recently is extremely happy with their purchase and they have no intention of leaving. I've covered numerous buyer's remorse stories with you guys, highlighting all the problems that people have had with buying a house over the past couple of years during the run-up. And I think there's a lot of people out there that would get out of that property if they could right now, but they can't. Even people that say they intend to hang on to the house, guys, things change. Like even me, you know, when I bought my condo two years ago, basically, it's almost two years ago now, I had the intention that I'm gonna hang on to this place for a really long time, maybe forever. But now I'm kind of thinking about maybe not doing that, you know? Maybe I will move to somewhere else. That just goes to show you how 
in just a couple of years, people's lives change, people's priorities change, you know, their circumstances change that can lead them to make a different decision than what they had originally intended to do. And regardless of this data, even though people say that they're happy where they're at, I think if rates came down substantially, you would see a lot of people list their homes for sale because this would allow people that have been wanting to move a chance to move and get in the next house with a lower monthly payment. And ironically enough, the more people that actually do this, especially all at once, it will lower home prices as well. Because when you have a flood of inventory into the market, it lowers prices. And one interesting thing that George Gammon pointed out the other day in one of his videos is that home prices are already going down, guys. First of all, the price of a new home has shrunk substantially. It's about 13% down year over year right now. So that's came down at a much faster clip than existing homes. The other thing that he pointed out in his video, because so many home builders are doing rate buy downs and they're giving people artificially low interest rates, this is also artificially propping up the housing market because they're still able to sell the home at a relatively high price because the buyer is getting a lower rate than what they would typically get from a different lender or if they were to buy an existing home. And so those completed home sales turn into comps which boost the prices of homes in the surrounding area. Because if they weren't allowed to do these mortgage rate buy downs, for example, then the only thing they'd be able to do is cut prices and with the prices being cut, that would much more accurately reflect what's happening in the current housing market because essentially they are cutting the price but the way they're doing it is through a mortgage rate buy down not through taking the number off the actual price tag okay we made it this is the house i wanted to show you guys this house has literally been for sale since before i left for my trip for california guys and it's still sitting here on the market for sale today so this house is a three bedroom three bathroom and it's listed for sale at two and a half million dollars and of course it's another flip okay because they bought it back in 2021 literally two years ago for 1.85 million tried listing it for sale back in may for 2.85 million and have substantially cut the price since then a little over three hundred and fifty thousand dollars of a price cut and it's still available for sale and then when we look at redfin's competitiveness for a house like this it's not much competition at all you can see that it says not very competitive to buy a house like this oh i wonder why probably because most people don't have 2.8 million dollars to throw at a house like this maybe that's the reason and so this proves an interesting point right now that home sellers are not in the driver's seat anymore when it comes to asking whatever they want guys because two years ago this house would have just flew off the market because in fact that's what actually happened this person who bought this house paid 1.85 million for it and the house flew off the market back in 2017 the previous owner before them bought it for only nine hundred and twenty thousand dollars so what is this house really worth well probably not much more than what the, the current owner actually paid for it but yet they want two and a half million dollars guys you think they're actually going to get it i don't especially if the house has been sitting on the market for sale for that long so people need to get with the program right now if they want to sell houses because one of the problems is that home sellers can still read stories like this and think that they can still command top dollar you know i just saw this the other day u.s home prices rose to record high in august and this is according to the case shiller home price index okay that median home prices across the country are up 2.6 percent as of August of 2023. And when we look at the more recent data from the National Association of Realtors for September, it says that home prices are up 2.8% from a year earlier. So a home seller might look at that and say, well, home prices are still going up. I can ask more than ever. Well, not really guys, because this place I just showed you is a perfect example. I mean, this house has been listed for almost six months now. A fairly priced house or a well-priced house should sell in like 30 days, for real. No matter what the market conditions are, even under these conditions right now. Now, obviously, if you still live in an area where homes are still very affordable, then you might be able to get away with pricing the house higher than ever and still get it sold because it's still relatively cheap compared to an area like this. But it is also important to pay attention to the overall trend because one thing you have to remember 
is the Case Shiller Home Price Index is delayed by a couple of months. We just got their August data and we just stepped into November. So it's close to two to three months behind. And if you look at what Redfin's data is showing that goes all the way up through September, you can see that home prices have been falling pretty steadily since June of 2023. But yet you'll still see that the home prices are up year over year. So it's important to understand that if you want to sell your house right now in today's environment, moving into the winter season, then you're likely going to have to ask less for the house than you would have, say, back in March or April, because then that's when home prices were still going up, guys. But we can see that even though prices are up year over year, they're starting to sink down again for the season. And I always think this could be a good time of year for buyers to step into the market, because if home prices are going down and you're still seeing new listings come up in your area, that's gonna give you some leverage as a buyer to be able to have more options to choose from, first of all, which is always a good thing, and it will give you the ability to negotiate and have the potential to walk away from a deal if you don't like it. And by the way, anybody who does need to buy or sell a home, feel free to use the link in the description of my videos. I can set you up with a real estate agent nationwide. It's a completely free service to you and it benefits the channel. So if you use it, I appreciate it. Now we saw this week that the Fed decided to put another pause on interest rates and not lower them or increase them. So what is this gonna mean for mortgage rates moving forward? Does this mean that mortgage rates are gonna go down or stay the same? The media and realtors will tell you to lock in your rate right now because rates might go up even higher, which is actually true, rates might go up even higher. Mortgage interest rates are tied almost directly with the 10-year treasury. And the 10-year treasury has hit a recent high of close to 5%, but it's actually been coming down over the past couple of weeks, and it's down to about 4.68% as of me recording this video. So mortgage rates are likely to fall a little bit as well with that recent fall in the 10-year treasury. But we can see the overall trajectory of the 10-year treasury has been steadily going up over the past couple of years. And if it continues to go up, we're likely to see mortgage rates get even higher than they are today, even if the Fed does nothing. And the same is also true for interest rates on other type of loan products like car loans and credit cards, personal loans. These rates can also go up as well, even if the Fed doesn't do any more hikes. But the funny thing is they're telling people now lock in an 8% rate because that's gonna look like a good deal compared to the eight and a half or 9% interest rates that you could be facing in the next few months. <laughs> so yeah, guys, go ahead, lock in your 8% interest rate right now. You're getting a great deal. Now you can, of course, always buy down your rate. You have home builders buying down the rate, which is what's artificially keeping the prices higher, but you can buy down your own rate as well by paying your lender points if you want to do that. But the problem is now, interest rates have gotten so high, even if you pay the lender points, it's still gonna cost a fortune for your monthly house payment at these prices. So it's getting to the point, guys, where none of this makes sense anymore. It doesn't make sense to be a buyer. You know, I covered with you a couple days ago how renting is literally 52% cheaper than buying basically everywhere right now. And even the example I gave in that video, I found a house that was for sale that would literally cost 35% less to rent versus buy, because that house is for rent or for sale. So take your pick. Do you want a monthly payment that's 35 or 52% higher than what it would be to rent that same house? I don't know why anybody would opt for that right now, especially going into this time when we could be seeing mortgage rates hit you know, 9% soon. Now I saw an interesting question come up on the Florida Realtors website, and it was basically this. They said that we recently had someone in our neighborhood lose a home to foreclosure. We feel terrible for the owners. With a nearby foreclosure, can we expect home prices in the neighborhood to fall? And then the story goes on to give a long diatribe answer of how this is in 2008 and we're not gonna see a huge distress in the housing market, of course. That's what all the real estate agencies are saying. But anyways, what's the answer to the question? Does one foreclosure listing actually make the value of your home go down? Well, not necessarily. They actually talked to uh, somebody on the real estate appraisal board here in Florida to give you an accurate answer to this. And one thing that he says is that a foreclosure is a forced sale, okay? And basically it means that one party is acting under compulsion and it would not be a parable sale compared to 
what they call a fair sale. So a fair sale is somebody voluntarily listing their house for sale because they want to sell it. And a foreclosure is a forced sale. They're not selling because they want to. They don't have a choice in the matter. And so this real estate appraiser is saying that a forced sale or foreclosure is not equivalent to a fair sale and therefore shouldn't be valued the same. Now, on the surface, I agree with that answer. And what he says is generally, if one house in the neighborhood is lost to foreclosure, it should not result in falling home prices. I also agree. Just because one house sells for foreclosure in your neighborhood doesn't mean everything's gonna fall apart overnight. But the part of the story that they left out here is what happens when you start seeing multiple foreclosures in your neighborhood. Then what? Maybe one foreclosure sale in your neighborhood won't change the value of your home, but I guarantee you five, six, or 10 of them will. And even though it's not technically the same type of sale, they are forced sales, that's the point when it doesn't matter anymore. Because now you have a bunch of homes in your neighborhood that are starting to sell for less. And home buyers are going to look at that and say, hey, your house isn't worth what you're asking anymore. And when you hire a real estate agent to sell your house, they're gonna pull the comps and they're gonna be forced to use those as comps even though it's not supposed to be an equivalent sale. But the reality is it is, guys. It's an equivalent sale because if, you have, if that's all that's selling in your neighborhood or those are half of the home sales recently, you have to count it. You can't just ignore it. And so when there's multiple foreclosures closing in your neighborhood at lower prices, yes, it will bring down the value of homes in your neighborhood. Not just one, you need to have multiple ones coming, but if that happens, you can be guaranteed it will start dragging down the value of homes in your neighborhood, not just because the comps are gonna start closing for less, but also because foreclosures basically usually cause blight. You know, usually you see the houses with uncut yards and overgrown bushes and lots of uh, deferred maintenance, and it's an eyesore. And the more of that you have going on in your neighborhood, the more junk piled up in front of people's yards, things like that, then the worse overall it makes the neighborhood look, which is a bad first impression for the buyer and leads to home prices coming down even further. So if you're somebody that's thinking about selling your home, if you see a lot of foreclosures going up for sale in your neighborhood, that can be a huge red flag that you might wanna get out now before it's too late and why you can still extract the value of that house because the more foreclosures that end up selling in your neighborhood, probably the lower it's gonna bring the value of your home. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you subscribe to the channel. And if you don't wanna wait for my next video to come out, check out this one on the screen right over here, and I'll see you in the next one.